Welcome everyone to another episode of Connect the Knox. I am your host, Julia Hurley. We're here connecting Knoxville to the nation. Today's guest is a good friend of mine, Stephanie Eastman Vozar, who is the, let me make sure that I understand, <laughs> the Chair of Philanthropy for the University of Tennessee Alumni Association. Close. We all have long titles at the University of Tennessee. So many titles. Correct the title for me. I want to make sure everybody knows who we're speaking with and then go into how you ended up in this space. I'm the Director of Corporate Philanthropy. I do sit on the foundation side, but for the University of Tennessee. Very good. All right. So you asked me how I got to Knoxville, I think is really the question. Yeah, how do we end up here? How do we end up in Vols country? You know, there's a name for me. They call me a halfback. So <laughs> I started, uh, I'm originally from Flint, Michigan, and really had no plans to leave there. Was uh, born and raised, lived all my life. We ended up moving to Naples, Florida. And of course, it was a little too hot down there, and we needed to be a little bit closer to our family. So I actually moved here to Knoxville. We were looking to be closer to Michigan, but I accepted the position as the first director of development for Young Williams Animal Center, which is what actually brought my husband and I here to Knoxville. And that was about five years ago. So Young Williams Animal Shelter for people outside of this area who don't know is our largest animal shelter. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So that, that in and of itself, running a sizable shelter like that is huge. How did you transfer out of that and end up at UT? Yeah, I was there at Young Williams for about four years and we built up a great development department and uh, I was really ready to, to move on and to put my energy into something a little different. So the truth is, and this very rarely happens, but I saw this job posted, I applied, I interviewed, they liked me uh, and here I am and I'm never leaving because I absolutely love it here. But that's it's very rare that that happens. It's very hard to get into the University of Tennessee. So I'm, I'm very blessed and excited to be here. So what exactly does your role entail at UT? Because we interview, like today, uh, some of our interviewees, we've interviewed Randy Boyd, we've interviewed Dr. Hosh, we've interviewed some of the communications people, some of the sports people, and it seems like UT, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it is. The University of Tennessee is not just one place, it's Tennessee systems, it's the state, and it's the state's largest educator. And knowing kind of how each person fits into their dynamic and the role that they have taken on or created, really, and grown, what is your role exactly? That's a great question. And I guess that's part of the second question. I was really looking to grow into this role and it happened to be posted and, and I swear it was created just for me. So I'm the director of corporate philanthropy. I do sit centrally here across the university. So what that means is that my focus is really on our industry partners, our corporate partners uh, all over the nation, a little sometimes all over the world. And we're really trying to connect and engage with those corporate par partners for what they want and need out of the university. And so that can be, lots of different things and it can happen through lots of different ways. Sometimes it's research projects. Uh, most of the time it has to do with the students and the workforce and, and what they need and what they're looking to get out of it. Sometimes it's scholarships. Sometimes it's working directly with our faculty and our staff here. Sometimes it's they want to come and speak to a class so that they're helping our students. So I sit centrally. My role is to really be that one main person that's building a relationship with our corporate partners to see everything that they want to get and, and what they need and how they can help and be engaged across the entire campus. And then I work with all the other colleges and units, you know, in the vice versa way. So I get to learn what's important to them and what they really need from our corporate partners. And I bring that up. So in the end, we have this uh, wonderful working relationship where corporations are getting what they need here and they're, and they're investing in the university so that we can build the students of tomorrow and really have that workforce be what they're looking for. New technologies, that types of things. So it's really shaped the entire future of tomorrow in that symbiotic relationship. So that's really interesting. And one of the questions that I have asked every person that we've done this podcast with, and I think the podcast is going on, we're on our third season, so second year. One of the biggest questions that we ask every person is, what do you think that, that Knoxville area can do to maintain the younger generation of college graduates to stay and work here? And that's, that's your whole role, is making sure that they have the opportunities to stay and work here. So what is that looking like on your end of it versus, you know, because 
as, as, a, as a real estate agent here in this growing market, we have a lot of retirees. I mean, the Knoxville area has more lakefront land than anybody else. Thank you so much, TVA, for providing that for us. We have a lot of recreation. But we also have a lot of retirees that are attracted to that. So what we've seen is a huge shift, like in Visit Knoxville, and the chambers are starting to focus on younger workers, younger opportunities. How can we attract that? What can we do to maintain it? And you're actually working with the businesses to say, hey, what do you need? And then taking that back to the to the to the university and saying, this is what they need. You know, what are we providing? So where's that mid range conversation happening? What's the biggest need right now that you're seeing from these industries and from these these sponsors? That's a loaded question. Uh, the need is different, kind of depending on what industry they're in and and in what stage of the game that they're in. It's always workforce, right? Like at the end of the day, if you don't have the folks to work for your company, then then what have you got, right? So our job is really to make sure that the quality of education that they are getting, including the systems that they use, the software that they use, um, the hands-on machine, even we're looking at some collaborative calls cultures here. So we have established for the first time the College of Kex. Everything has an initial here. I'm going to try to remember what it is, but it's the College of Emerging and Collaborative Studies. And so what that whole college is designed to do is is along with me work with those those uh, industry partners to see what they need out of their workforce and are they getting the right training and then we work with them to bring that right here to the university so that what they're looking to hire for they have all those skills that they need and again it might be simple skills it might be certain software certain programs certain machines we have all kinds of very robust labs that are built out for all the different industries and what that would look like but it's also cross training, right? Where you start today is not where you're going to end up tomorrow. So you're going to need a bunch of different skills. If you just have engineering, that might not be enough. If you're going to end up being in management and leadership, you might also need accounting and those types of things. So we're trying to make sure that the education is very well-rounded and very centered on what those corporate partners are looking for so that they get the workforce of tomorrow. And that workforce is, is nimble and they can go on to all those leadership roles and they can grow with the company and, and have the foundation that they need to really do what they're looking for. But then alternatively, we're also trying to help industry. You know, we're certainly growing here in Knoxville. That's that's no secret. Um, and we're bringing a lot of great industry partners here. So that's our role as well. We work with the, with the chamber with Visit Knoxville that you mentioned. We try to work with them and our corporate partners to help them, whether it's open up offices or maybe move their headquarters, or maybe they'd like to lease some space at our Cherokee Farms Research Center, anything that's going to make them more present and available here. But it's going to provide that opportunity for our students, again, to stay here and work because they're moving their areas of work here. So it's kind of a two-pronged approach. Okay. So on the other side of that, then, so the industries can contact you and say, hey, we're going to, we're, we're thinking about moving our industry here. This is kind of where we need our workforce to be in three, five, and 10 years. You know, can you all put together something and, and you collaborate? Let's reverse that and say students are like, hey, I really want to do this. And we don't really have something tailored for that yet. Is that also something that you can build around and start to talk to industries and say, hey, you're not a corporate partner with us yet, but we've had, you know, 300 students ask for this or 3,000 students ask for this. Would you be interested in this? Yeah, I think that's that's definitely part of my role. I think that Randy and that Chancellor Plowman, they do an amazing job doing exactly that, looking at what the need is both for the students and for the industry partners and making sure that whatever that is comes to fruition. If it's not built, you know, we'll build it. We'll look at how we can how we can do it better and what the need really is there. Sure. Um, I think that's a big part of it. The bigger part of it is not only on the industry side, but showing those students what's available. And, and this is prevalent in any, any industry, especially mine. A lot of us come by our careers, we fall into it, or, or maybe we know a little piece of it, but we have no idea how many different types of careers really live in that industry. So that's another piece of it is to try to showcase that in the many different ways here. We give our students experiences. Um, sometimes it's called a vol trek, where we take them out to different areas, uh, different parts of the country. They get to tour many different industry partners in their field so that they can see just what all the levels of all the different jobs look like, what what a daily um, work routine is for them right there in the field. So yeah, it's definitely a two-way street, but it's, it's all about exposure and engagement to make sure that everyone has the most opportunity and so that we're helping not only the students in our university, but our industry partners as well, and everyone's getting what they need. 
We all know that real estate is location, location, location. Our team at Just Homes Group has the true expertise, pairing buyers and sellers with the right opportunities. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home right here in Knoxville, Lenore City, Clinton, or Farragut, we have the expertise throughout every Knoxville surrounding area. Call Just Homes Group. What have you seen as far as, and, and not necessarily from the industry side, but from the student, like what is the most interactive both ways? Let's say like an industry needs two or 3,000 employees and the students are like, man, I mean, okay. Or that there's two or 3,000 students that really want this and the, the industry's just not got enough space. Where's been kind of that sweet spot really here locally to keep to keep kids? Is it is in my mind? I drive down the interstate. Obviously, everybody sees Pilot Flying J, right? Like that's it's huge. We all know the name. Um, you know, you think immediately Pilot Flying J or transportation. You know, with the uh, Axle Logistics. What's been like the biggest need that's been able to also be filled? The field. You gotta love that. <laughs> God, that accent just came out. <laughs> that's been filled with what you've been able to put together so far? Yeah, you might wanna ask me that question in a different way. Um, I think, again, I think it comes down to exposure and creating opportunities and making them show, know the students know what opportunities are there. So if they can't get their, you know, a number one opportunity, then, then let's look at what else is there. Let's look at what's similar to there. Let's show them opportunities. A lot of times for us, um, it's internships. It's the different working relationship all along the line until they graduate. They're always getting in. Our corporations are always getting in very, very early to target our students, to get in front of the students, to show them who they are, what they represent, what that culture looks like, what all the different jobs are. And so they're starting to build their relationships with the students very, very early on. Um, I can't think of a great example for the question. So again, you might want to, to re-ask it as far as having too many jobs. Like, let's just say, like, so the last few people that I've spoken with in general, just as, as a whole, I kind of asked the same question in a different way. Where do they see the future of the young workforce? And, you know, one, two or three people that I've interviewed have said, we really desperately need electricians and plumbers. We are so desperate for these two things that if we don't start to get kids involved in this, we're, we're going to be in a world hurt. Like our, our whole industry will fail. And then I've had a few people just say, hey, we need better sales training. We need a lot. We need a bigger sales staff. Or I've had people say, we need to learn. And, and again, I am so intrigued the industry is taking on the we need to change. And this is a shift in conversation just over the last decade, I think we've seen in industries taking responsibility that they are the ones that want to change, saying we need to learn how to let kids and, and future workers work from home. So we have to adapt to the way that our needs and wants are versus what they can give and what their needs and wants are. So kind of where's the where's been the best matchup per se so far? Again, that's such a challenging question because I think it's everywhere, right? I, I think we're hearing that that we really need nurses. Uh, we work a great deal with the automotive and advanced manufacturing industry. You know, as you look at electric car and mobility and fuel cells and, and all the wonderful things that are going on right here in Knoxville, we have a beautiful relationship with the NSF, the National Science Foundation, and we've received several different grants of, of multi-millions recently to set up um, hubs right here in Tennessee, right here at the University of Knoxville, really specializing in advanced manufacturing and automotive. Um, and as that industry really changes, that technology changes, obviously there's a huge need for that, a huge need for nurses. Um, I think we really, we try to connect very uniquely with each of those industry partners. So we're never trying to put square peg in a round hole. It's never one education piece or, or one way to engage. We're really looking at each college and each industry as a unique field with their unique needs and, and to try to place them and build them. I'm working with our friends in the music and the entertainment industry, which of course, as, after COVID, you know, it was it was truck drivers. It was going back on the road. It was all of the staff that you think about in the entertainment business, especially if you're touring with a musician or anyone on the road. They suffered quite a bit. So we're we're discussing with them how we can help 
not only make the jobs aware, but provide those that education and some of it might be a certification to increase those fields that are lacking. Obviously, supply chain, you know, we have our supply chain forum here. So I think it is a unique approach to each of those things. There's a huge need, as you mentioned, for the trades. And so even though we're the university and we're not, you know, the trade center, we do try to work closely with TCAT. And again, it's a lot of our advanced manufacturing friends, right? They need they need both skills on both sides. And so there's definitely a dual relationship where we say, how can we do this differently? How can we work with everyone? How can we have a great relationship with everyone? It's not, I only do this and, you know, we don't, the trades are are not our thing, right? No, it's, it's what can we do to make sure that we're getting the best education, certifications, aligning the right partnerships to make sure that we're fueling that pipeline where it's lacking and for tomorrow. So as somebody who graduated college 25 years ago this year, it's been a minute. This is my 25th anniversary. It's very exciting. <clears throat> very exciting. <laughs> education is completely different. Like this kind of a conversation was never possible when I went to college. It, it was not even a, a thought. This this future thinking, what can we do to, to preempt this? When I was 17, I entered you know campus for the first time and had absolutely no idea what I was going to do when I got out of there, you know, $100,000 in debt, which these kids aren't having to take on, which is a whole separate issue or a whole separate amazing thing with Tennessee Promise. But having people in this position like you are in saying, hey, let's find your talents, let's find a company, let's get you an internship like your freshman year and work towards something. This is unbelievably unheard of, I think. And I think Tennessee's really taking the reins with that forward thinking educational opportunity. Where do you see your position growing to. Yeah, my position is really just starting. Uh, I'm I'm kind of a teen of one right now. So eventually I think we will grow up grow a corporate philanthropy uh, team with corporate philanthropy officers. I think they will all sit centrally, you know, but that's kind of a little bit far in the future. We, it may behoove us to have a corporate philanthropy officer sitting in each college to have those special relationships uniquely with the field that might make a difference. But there's definitely, we just have so many wonderful relationships and so many people really want to work with us for all those reasons that we discussed. So there's there's so much work to be done in the future. I see this team growing. I see our relationships with our industry partners growing. I see Knoxville growing in turn and as this technology grows. And I'm not really sure where it will go, but but I know we're going to stay on this path where we're really building relationships and asking the right questions and finding the right solutions and really working uh, in sync step with those industry partners and them with our students to make sure that the future looks bright. So there's going to be more of me here across campus and we're going to be able to reach more of our corporate partners and to work more hands on with the students and here across the university so that we've got an even brighter tomorrow. When we look back on this interview 25 years ago, from now, right, that conversation is going to look even different about what that workforce of tomorrow looks like, remote learning, you know, 6G, 7G, who knows, those VR headsets and the way you do your work, everything's going to change. And we're really on the cutting edge of, of that. So I look forward to seeing what that looks like, really. It's it's always very exciting. And my day is different every day. And it's always just, just fun and neat. And I can't wait to see what that looks like. So if you could choose... If you could, if you could choose, so the nation's listening. I mean, our podcast is highly downloaded, which we're so excited about. You know, we we finally hit some rankings. We've started to get some movement on Apple, so it's like woohoo! Uh, people want to hear about Knoxville. People are listening across the nation. Well, who would you reach out to and say, "Hey, we don't have this industry. We'd love to have you. We've got some kids that are really interested in this. We let's have a conversation." I mean, they're listening. People are watching Knoxville. They want to be a part of it. Who do you need that you don't have? Industry partner wise, I'm not sure I was really prepared for that question. <laughs> um, I, I think we, I think we really cover the gamut of our industry partners. But again, I would, I would say to all those people that are listening, and if you're in a unique industry and and maybe you feel overlooked, reach out to me because I'd like to hear from you and I'd like to hear how we can utilize you if we don't, and how we can connect you with our students. Um, I think marketing is obviously something that that's really growing. We have that in two different colleges right now. That's just a booming industry that was, as we know, always always changes. So they may be a little underrepresented. Again, I think maybe with the entertainment industry, as we start this this new venture with what 
what does a touring entertainment certificate look like and what are all of those different needs and how do we create that? Um, and we're kind of just on the cusp of those conversations, but there's probably a lot of different industries in that world that we really need to hear from. Some we might have already partners with, some might be alumni of ours that uh, we do have partners with. But if you just think about all of the different aspects of that job from managing to accounting to truck driving you know to lighting to ticket takers public speaking i mean anything that you think about when you just think about entertainment in general that's a really big field so there's probably room for growth there but again i i don't know where we're missing and if you think if you're out there and you're listening and you think we are missing or you want to know what we're doing in your field or how it could be enhanced that's that's my challenge i'm always up for reach out to me let me see how i can help you what we're doing or what we could be doing better i love that and and folks if you don't know stephanie i met stephanie uh, when she first got here like or or using at ut when she first started here at ut and we've started a good relationship we have these conversations at least once a quarter i'm like well what about this what about this and i just love it because she's so growth minded if there's never a limit to what is coming, what can happen, what will happen, who we need to talk to, where she's going to go, and where she's willing to take these kids. And when I say these kids, I mean, I, I'm working with some of the kids on the football team. As you know, Stephanie, we talk about real estate investing. We talk about you know financial planning. And their mindset at the age of 20 is light years ahead of where I was at at 20. So having these conversations and knowing that there's somebody to reach out to or connect them with that can find them what they want is half the battle is the connection, which is the reason for the podcast, connecting Knoxville to the nation. People need to be connected to the people they want to reach out to and that they know they have an idea or a thought and they're like, I don't even know who to call. I know who to call. You call Stephanie. Yeah, I love to help. I love a good challenge. I always say if I can't find the answer, I'll someone, find someone who will. So it might not be me that can help you, but I'll, I'll definitely make sure that, that your conversation is being heard, that your needs are being heard, and that we can figure out how we can make a, a better tomorrow together. Yeah, you definitely live up to that for sure. And I, I always appreciate being able to connect people with you. So I'm going to shift the conversation a little bit because you are not a Knoxvillian, but you now are a Knoxvillian. So what, aside from the University of Tennessee and the opportunities you've been given, you could probably now take this same kind of, of concept and take it anywhere. And you still, you're, every day, you're so excited to be a Knoxville. Every time I talk to you, you found something new to do. This is the best place. What makes you continue to choose Knoxville? We absolutely love it here. Again, I, I really do love my job. I really love the people that I work with. I love being part of this university. Uh, and it really is the leadership just absolutely from the top all the way down that is making this place a better place to be and that's making our community a better place to be. So that's very exciting. Um, my husband, of course, has a great career here, which is very exciting. You know, I know it's the cheesy things. Not only is it this community and, and there's wonderful people and, and I've just have so many amazing connections since I've lived here. I, I feel the most connected with just the best people and the best opportunity here, but it is kind of the, the simple things, right? Like the weather and and there is so much to do and, and it's the perfect temperature. So I told you I'm a halfback. I came from Michigan. I am not going back to those bitter winters. You cannot make me. And then we moved down to South Florida, which of course is just a beautiful paradise, but it's a little bit too hot. There's a lot going down there. There's some hurricanes. I worked for the Red Cross before I, I came up here. So so we know about the effect on all that. And this in Knoxville is just absolutely perfect. You can get to any place that you wanna go pretty reasonably. We're right here in the center. The weather is just perfect almost all the time. And if it's not, you just wait a few minutes and it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> But there's so much to do there. There's hiking and there's camping and there's, you know, beautiful lakes and waterfalls and there's just a great food scene. We really love to eat. We really love to cook. And most days we're really just sitting on our porch, enjoying the weather and, and our coffee and just being happy to be here. So it's kind of the simple things, but this is really the perfect place to be. I love that. And you're, you have a fantastic porch, by the way. Matt, it's huge. Because you have the biggest porch I think I've ever seen. Uh, so. If when, just a fire round, when people visit you from Florida or from Michigan or from out of state and they've never been to Knoxville, where's the first place you think to take them? No, I really like Alley Rays. You cannot beat that place. Alley Rays. So they started as a food truck and they've got a great little restaurant right across from Broadway Carpets over there on, on Central, I believe. 
and they just have the best food. They've got chefs that are preparing something new and different and very creative every day, so their menu changes. They've got really unique drinks that are, you know, craft cocktails, and they have a little coffee bar. So if you like fried cauliflower, it's actually the best fried cauliflower I've ever had anywhere I have been in the nation. So that's, that's always my dinner spot. This is the first time anybody's brought that up. I've never heard of it, so now I have to go. See, I was I was talking with uh, Visit Knoxville, and I, I said, you know, I am at the point right now where, as a lifelong Knoxvillean, I still have a list this long of places I can't keep up with anymore. All the new hot spots, I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't made it there. I haven't made it there. That's on the list now. Not even, didn't even know it existed. It's on the list. I do love fried it's great. And it's great, you know, for old ladies like me. I know I'm not supposed to say that, but they have entertainment and they do singo and they have bands and they have uh, open mic night and what have you. But it always starts early. I think they start by seven and they're done by like 930. So you can take your family, you can go to dinner, you can still hear the band play and you can still go home, you know, do the laundry and go to bed. I love that. I love that. All right. Top, top three breweries or pubs. I gosh. I don't get out that much. I think I really like, I would say Zool and Abridged is great. I mean, not only do you have great beer, but they have great food. Their pizza is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you can't beat their burgers. And of course, Zool has the Abridged truck. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. <laughs> you cheat a little bit. That's cheating. <laughs> I know. And I mean, I like Allie Ray's, right? I, can I count them as a pub and just say that yeah, absolutely. it's a great place absolutely. for drinks? Okay. It is on my list. I genuinely have not heard of this place. I'm very excited to try a new place. It is so rare that somebody gets me on something I don't know about. So now I'm excited about it. I'm excited about that. So I have taken up already almost the whole 30 minutes. I could talk to you and talk with you about the future of Knoxville's philanthropic community because what you are doing is connecting everything. You're connecting the dots to the kids, to the community. And that is something that's been lacking at UT for a very long time. And I would say over the last eight years has been a true focus and a massive opportunity for community leaders and businesses to reach out to you, to get connected to these kids and the future workforce of the Knoxville market. Where can people connect with you so they can become a part of what you are trying uh, to accomplish here. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure our website is completely up yet, but I'm sure if you go to the University of Tennessee uh, Foundation website, you can find me somewhere, right? But my email is svozar at utk.edu, and I'm always over here in, in Andy Holt Tower on campus, and uh, you can email me or call me anytime, and I'm, I'm happy to just sit down and, and learn about not only you as an individual, but, but corporations, and, and what does your corporation need, and what your industry need and how it can help really make that work for you and get everybody what they need. So I'd say email me, svozar at utk.edu. All right, y'all, you heard it here. If you are looking to grow your industry with current workers and looking for an opportunity to partner with the University of Tennessee and its students, which is huge, you got 40,000 kids there that, that could possibly be an employee for you and your industry and just getting to know other industry as well and leaders in the community. Stephanie is the person to go to. She is phenomenal. She will sit with you and learn all about your business and what you need. Stephanie, thank you so much for your time today. We look forward to meeting with you in the next couple of months to go over our businesses as well and just staying connected with you. And we appreciate everything you do. Thanks for having me. This has been wonderful. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Nation, one more episode of Connect the Knox is in the books. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. I'm Julia Hurley, your host, connecting Knoxville to the nation. Until next time. Thank you for tuning into the show. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a five-star review on your podcast player of choice. And if you would like information on moving to Knoxville, send me a private message. As always, this is Julia Hurley connecting Knoxville to the nation.